This is another quick and dirty on the fly video uh, having to do with plate tectonics. Why do plates move more or less? Well, this is a really complicated question. So let me just um, uh, tell you right off the bat that what I'm going to tell you is a simplification and it's based on sort of the consensus at the moment, but it's a matter of active research. First of all, if we think about the, the possible um, motive forces behind uh, the fact that the Earth's outer surface is, is in motion, um, gravity provides the force that's going to do it. It um, is acting on density variations in the pieces of lithosphere. Some parts of a given sla uh, piece of lith lithosphere might be denser than some other parts, and so the denser parts are going to have a stronger tendency to move downwards towards um, the source of the gravitational field. Um, it also depends on the strengths of those materials. If they're really, really strong, they won't be able to bend so well and, and so forth. Um, depends on the rheology of the materials. Uh, rheology is a fancy schmancy term that helps us to understand different material behaviors, like a, a glass bottle uh, will break brittily, um, silly putty will flow, uh, water will uh, flow, um, and, and so forth. Rheology plays a role because it turns out that the uh, crust and uppermost part of the upper mantle is pretty darn strong, and the part of the upper mantle below this two-piece sandwich of crust and upper mantle uh, called the lithosphere the part that's under the lithosphere is the asthenosphere, and it's significantly weaker. And that's because of the different rheologies of these two things. So let's look at some of the possible mechanisms for moving a plate. One of them is called slab pull. Here we've got um, a piece of lithosphere with oceanic crust on top and upper mantle lithosphere below. To the left, we've got a piece of lithosphere that has continental crust on top and upper mantle lithosphere below. And a um, little bit of uh, color here up at the top. This is the ocean water. Okay, And so the deepest part of the oceans is uh, found in places that we call trenches, like the Marianas Trench and so forth. Um, and that's because the oceanic plate is dipping down and subducting, uh, and where it bends to go down, you have basically a hole, a trench, a deep spot on the, the surface of the Earth. So let's just see what happens over time. Uh, here's day one, here's another day, and what's happening is that this slab is simply drooping down into the mantle as it's going. It's, it's more like a limp piece of spaghetti than it is like a letter being shoved into a mail slot as it goes down into the mantle. So as it pulls, it goes down into the mantle, sort of like an anchor at the end of a line, it pulls the oceanic crust along the surface of the earth more or less. Okay. Well, that sets up another uh, mechanism for plate motion, and this one affects that, that continental crust, that plate that's on the top, because Mother Nature doesn't really like having gaps. So as that slab is sinking down into the mantle, the overriding plate is being pulled towards the trench. The reason for that is what's happening down in that uh, ductile, weak asthenosphere. That stuff is flowing. And as the asthenosphere flows underneath the continental plate, it drags the plate towards the trench. Here the asthenosphere is flowing down. Now why is the asthenosphere flowing? It's flowing because this lithosphere is dropping down into it. So imagine that you have your your hand in a, a big vat of nice, gooey, warm chocolate. 
and you shove your hand into that gooey warm chocolate, the chocolate is going to move in response to the fact that you just shoved your hand into it. And it'll move something like this. And that flow drags the continental crust towards the trench. And we call this mechanism trench pull. It's called a lot of different things, but I'm going to call it trench pull. Um, nerds call it a stenospheric counterflow. I'm sort of a nerd, but we'll go with trench pull. Um, another mechanism operates along mid-ocean ridges. Now, funny thing about um, the plates at mid-ocean ridges, the plates are really, really thin. The lithosphere is really thin at the mid-ocean ridge, and right along the axis of the mid-ocean ridge, the plate is really only about as thick as the crust is, five to eight kilometers. In this case, uh, the oceanic crust averages between five and eight kilometers thickness. And it's, it's, it's hot down here in the asthenosphere. In fact, the asthenosphere is right up at the bottom of the plate. Okay, so as this plate moves to the right, it's moving away from this area where it's kind of hot and it's cooling. And as it cools, it thickens by accretion. It's actually part of the asthenosphere down here cools and when it cools it becomes strong and attaches itself to the bottom of the plate. Kind of like barnacles on the hull of a ship. So as we move from the mid-ocean ridge away from the ridge, the age of the lithosphere increases. This is zero age lithosphere being created right now during this talk. Um, and as we move further and further away, the lithosphere's age is older and older and older. So over here, we're looking at lithosphere that was at a mid-ocean ridge maybe millions of years ago, and now it has drifted away. The depth to the seafloor increases. So along mid-ocean ridge axes, the operable word here being ridge, it is shallower than away from the ridge axis. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and the deepest part of oceanic uh, of the oceans are the oceanic trenches. The thickness of the upper mantle lithosphere increases due to cooling and accretion from below. So the thinnest lithosphere is right at the mid-ocean ridge, and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker as you get off to the uh, side uh, uh, distance away from the ridge. Okay. And because the thickness of the upper mantle lithosphere increases, the thickness of the entire lithosphere increases away from the ridge. Well, so what does that do for us? Look at the boundary between the soft asthenosphere below and the harder lithosphere above, the weak asthenosphere below and the strong lithosphere above. That boundary is curved, okay? And so, in a way, we can think about it like this. Now, when I made this illustration a few years ago, I took this boundary that my little toy cars are on. The shape of that boundary is exactly the shape, shape of the base of the plate. And um, I said, well, you know, what would happen if I put some little toy wooden cars on top of it and held them in place with a little wedge. And so there they are sitting on this inclined surface. What would happen if I pull the wedge out? Well, you know what would happen. They would move. And so it turns out that the lithosphere moves away from the mid-ocean ridge um, because it's got a boundary at the bottom that is curved or um, not horizontal, and it's being acted on by gravity. So gravity acts on the mass of the train causing downslope motion. Gravity acts on the mass of the lithosphere causing motion away from the mid-ocean ridge. So this is a mechanism we call ridge push. It's really more like ridge slide, um, but uh, the thing is that it's gravity that causes the motion away from the lift, away from the mid-ocean ridge, um, 
And so both sides are doing this. And so we have spreading along the mid-ocean ridge because the plate on the left is moving to the left. The plate on the right is moving towards the right. So we've got these three main mechanisms that we've been talking about. We've got slab pull, we've got uh, ridge push, we've got trench pull. And if we look at a map of the major plates um, where blue is where we the blue boundaries are ridges, the red boundaries are trenches, we find that big plates like the Pacific plate are moving really quickly. These long arrows indicate uh, velocity and direction. So they're moving very quickly towards these red boundaries. The slab is pulling the Pacific plate towards the trench. And the slab in this case is the Pacific plates slab that is subducting underneath these other plates. Okay. Simultaneously, the Pacific plate is moving rapidly away from the ridge. So it turns out that slab pull and ridge push, in this case, are forces that are moving the plate kind of in the same direction. And uh, so this is based on modeling by um, Grip and Gordon from the 1990s. The bottom line is the motion of each individual plate is a combination of the motion towards a subducting edge away from a spreading ridge or towards a trench. So how do we know? Well, we've got these GPS um, stations that are have been located across the earth. There are more than 10,000 of them today, and they are able to resolve the motion of that piece of crust that the GPS receiver is attached to very accurately. And if we measure that motion over long time periods, we can see how the different parts of the lithosphere are in motion relative to, well, relative to the deeper mantle or to an adjacent plate. Mathematically, we can take these data and resolve them in any number of different reference frames. This particular one is the motion of um, North America and the Pacific Plate and various other tidbits uh, relative to the deeper mantle in something called a no-net rotation uh, reference frame. So do we absolutely know uh, all of the ins and outs of what causes plates to move? Not yet. It's an interesting thing that lots of people work on and uh, the field that is taking the lead in trying to work these things out is called uh, geodynamics from the theoretical aspect and geodesy from the measuring where things are actually going aspect of the problem. But it's still a very interesting problem. Let's summarize. Why do plates move? Well, um, if a plate has a slab attached to it, slab pull is going to be the most important uh, influence. If it doesn't, uh, ridge push is going to be important if that plate has a ridge associated with it. Trench pull is um, uh, another force. It, it, in terms of energy, it's probably less important than slab pull and ridge push. It's certainly less important than slab pull. And then there are other things. Um, mantle convection uh, causes uh, some motion. Um, and uh, there, there are just a, a lot of other little effects that cause motion uh, and, and sort of as a representative of this host of other things. I've got the Utfos force, which was the one that uh, Alfred Wegener, the, the champion of continental drift, uh, talked about. It, it has an effect. It's a very small effect. So it's a little bit like saying, well, what causes my old Volkswagen Beetle to move? Um, is it the wind behind it or is it the internal combustion engine? Well, actually, anybody who's ever driven a Volkswagen Bug knows that the wind plays a role, but it's mostly the internal combustion engine. So 
in this list, slab pull is is the thing that uh, is doing a good deal of the driving as long as the plate has a slab attached to it. If you want to learn more about um, the forces that drive the plates, here is an, another IRIS video, and you can pause the video and jot it down. That's all for now.